So what we're actually going to do here is uh, start to apply um, some reality, sort of, you know, basically like an entourage element. And it takes the form, very simply, of just guardrails, right? So all we're going to do is take these kind of platforms, and we're going to study how you can actually move through this space. Um, something that lends... Um, the, the thing that I want you to get beyond, though, is just studying movement through a space by just taking a plane and tilting it down and then calling that a ramp, right? You probably want to show some sort of articulation about how that element is integrated into the overall architectural condition. Um, so we're going to basically just create guardrails around some of our um, platforms and wherever we have something like a stair or a ramp to connect the two. Okay, so I'll show you first, you know, how do we make the, the slabs believable and, and realistic and, and um, you know, just some quick, very schematic stairs or ramps, right? We're not going to actually draw the, the tread of each stair. We're just going to use a ramp, but it's going to come at a different slope, basically, right? Um, so, um, first and foremost, jumping right into this, the, the ramps or the, the platforms that we have kind of leak out of the space and they're not exactly realistic, right? We just put them there as a program block, but a program block doesn't necessarily mean it, that it is the envelope of the building. So what I'm going to do with this is um, I'm going to use my clipping plane and then just kind of move my way down and draw new platforms for each one of uh, these levels. And then we're going to connect them later on. So sorry, guys, allergies. Um, so this one right here, uh, let's draw our clipping plane in the top view. And remember, with a clipping plane, you just kind of throw it off to the side and it should generally be good to go. Uh, you don't have to open up the grasshopper component yet. Um, <clears throat> in terms of which view you're actually showing it in, it doesn't matter if you show it in perspective and top view or one or the other. That part's up to you. Um, but one thing I am going to do is create a layer for my clipping planes. And then move that object to that layer. So now here in the perspective view, you can see as I, um, as I move this up and down, you see the, uh, the top layer or the second layer or the bottom layer. Um, but let's start with the bottom layer. So the way that I'm going to try to control this is to pull my clipping plane down to a level that's approximately in plane with that level itself. So if you kind of go down to the side, it kind of looks like it's very close, but it doesn't quite cut it all the way off. Then we're going to go in the top view. And that's where I'm actually going to integrate my platform um, into the building itself. So this area, the reason I turned mine on in the top and perspective view is so that I can get the level right, but then I can go in the top view and I can actually see where that cut is so that I can start to you know, place my, my floor plate a little bit more appropriately. Um, this particular configuration for the floor plate, I think actually works pretty well. In my design, I'm not going to have it uh, reach exactly out to the building itself, but theoretically you could just grab an edge like this and you could pretty much move it directly to the edge or slightly inside. Um, another thing you could do with this is um, basically just take the, the same surface, you can create a copy of it and then resize it to create an extension. So feel free to explore it this way if you'd like. Just start pushing and pulling and creating little attachments to try and fill it out a little more. Um, if you do that, and I'll just leave this here since it is, since I just created it. But then I would join them and then merge uh, all faces. Or it didn't merge them. Why didn't it merge them? Did they join? They did not. That's weird. Well, I could troubleshoot that later, but it's not that mission critical. Um, so anyway, that's the gist of it for, for something like this. Um, but you know, you're going to have to kind of get up to different levels as well. So let me jump into, there's my clipping plane. I'll pull it up. 
to a point where I'm just above my second level, which is right there. And so this one's gonna be quite different, right? This happens to kind of stick out that other side. I wound up with an opening here. That's kind of interesting. So I'll obviously retain that. And then this one sort of reaches out um, in a triangular fashion, like outside of the building, right? So what we're trying to understand in doing this is the idea of where our program block landed. And then we're actually going to design that floor plate to, to sort of sync up with it. So I think what I'm gonna do for this one is I'll put it on layer one and I'm just gonna grab my um, polyline. And I'm gonna start, I'll start from this, I'm gonna need near probably, near to perpendicular, right? Just to kind of cut that off a little bit. And I'm gonna go end, end. I'll even bring this one out. But the thing that I'm gonna change here is that I'm gonna change this piece to, uh, actually, no, I don't wanna do that. I need to redo that one. Start a polyline, I'll start it line, perpendicular, intersection. Um, stop this one a little short too. And then go to there, and I'm gonna hit enter to stop that one. And then I'm gonna need to go from here to somewhere short or shy of the outside of my building. And then I'm gonna carry one straight down like that. And then I'm going to do an arc and I'm gonna pull it to there. So it doesn't have to be um, perfect, but it is. it does have a curved element. I just wanna show you the applicability of curved elements and how that works with this one. Um, but you should make it look, and then, then you can actually get rid of the old ones. Um, and so this is essentially going to be my floor plate there. So I'll join those two together. Um, look at that, it went in plain. That's pretty cool. Um, and then you could create a planar surface if you want. Okay, and that looks like that. So you can double check these things in um, the perspective view to make sure that they're right. If you need to attach something, you could always just edit the profile and redo it. Really nothing special there. Um, the last thing would be that top level. And I'll grab that clipping plane, just go up to my top level here. Start to understand it. Uh, looks like my top level, I think I'm going to leave precisely where it is. Um, I don't need to do anything special to that one. Okay. So um, the last thing that you're going to want to do with this is to make it a believable uh, thickness because right now they're just planes. And this part is actually extremely easy. You just select the planes that you created and then you can extrude surface. Make sure that uh, solid equals yes. And then you just, you know, pull it downward or type in a negative value, but you pull it downward and you type in, um, I forget if it borrows the direction that you pull it. And then yeah, it, does. it does, right? Yeah. So um, just type it. Um, I think one foot will be fine for the scale of our building. Uh, it didn't. It went up. No, it went down. Oh. Yeah, it went up. I think it does if you're on a polar track, but I don't think I was on a polar track. Anyway, um, not extract, extrude. Um, negative one foot. There you go. So I extruded mine down. If, if down isn't right for your building for some reason, then extrude it up. But usually I, I design at the finish floor level and then I extrude floor plates down. It's just an easier way for me to control it because levels are kind of critical to that. So um, theoretically you could go and get rid of the surfaces, but if you don't, it's really not that big a deal because um, they won't get in the way necessarily. Um, or actually, you know what? Uh, leave them there, leave them there. In the next video, you'll understand why, okay? So um, if you could just go through the process of revising your floor plates and um, try to introduce at least one curved element. And it doesn't have to be compound or anything like that or like super complex, just make it a simple curved element. Uh, then we're gonna apply this grasshopper definition that I think you'll like. Um, yeah, any questions? All right.